down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, there's some girls in there sometimes. But, you know, ladies, I know you, I know you don't like me because I realized the other day I'm polarizing. Oh, some people like me. Some people hate me. And I know the ladies that I'm not a big fan of me because <laughs> I'm just raw. And you know what's interesting? When you're just who you are, you attract just the type of people uh, that you want to be around. And, and, and that type of people in my world are just authentic, real people. And so I am truly excited uh, to introduce uh, Andy Summer. I'm just going to say his name real fast and not make it mysterious because you, you, you can't He's just who he is. I met him, man, at least almost going on nine, eight years ago through another friend. And I don't know if you remember this, Andy. I think you were on stage speaking on HVAC. Do you, do you ever remember being, working, or mention, like Mr. Landlord brought you on stage and we're talking yeah. about capacitors and yeah. you're like, there's only three things that you need to learn in HVAC that will save you hundreds, thousands of dollars. Do you remember that? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's funny. I, I went to uh, Jeffrey Taylor's Mr. Landlord in 2011, me and my wife, and uh, we loved it. And I, fortunate enough, I got to, to speak in 2012 in St. Louis. That's um, where I met you. Eight yeah, years exactly. Ago. Yeah, yeah. And then we kicked it in Nashville, I think a week, year later or something. But yeah, um, just talked about HVAC as far as landlords and uh, real estate investing. Had a great time meeting a ton of people. It's uh, It's been a ride. Well, well, let me just tell you right now, this this guy is just super humble. Like, he's just, it's just who he is. He doesn't talk about himself. He's just always smiling, which is so bizarre. And he's madly in love with HVAC. So yeah, I'm I can, a nerd. For, for all these years, I've, I've run into him. I don't have I don't talk to him on a regular basis because I, I I live vicariously through this Ed O'Toole guy who 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 <laughs> hangs out with you and so like so how's Andy doing like you know blah 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 and then we've connected throughout the year so but before we get going into like because I have so many questions to ask you and as an investor let me just give people just kind of perspective first of all this guy is a master technician HVAC tech school instructor college level you know, mechanics, mechanical, like he will blow your mind if you just are willing to hang out with him for five minutes about making chillers and boilers of massive, I mean, what, what's the largest square footage building that you have consulted on, on HVAC? I, I, I gotta be curious. Yeah. It's, um, it, that last, uh, nine to five gig I did, they did some, some world-class work, uh, uh, the technicians, I just estimate and sold for them, but got to see some boilers that, you know, they suck down you know, seven LP tanks an hour and, and, uh, chillers that, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it, it's like a, like a hundred thousand square foot, like oh, we're acres, acres, you know, the, oh, I think, oh um, there's one that's probably got 120 acres under roof. And uh, you're heating air in it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you got and cool, you, and you, your huge engineer mind has to figure out like, uh, condensation uh, dr uh, drafts and uh, air yeah. take, airflow. I mean, like people think HVAC is some just like, oh, it's just a mechanical. No, there's so much science behind it. Yeah, it's it's the ultimate STEM level uh, classes. And I, I'm not an engineer, but I'm smart enough to hire the smart engineers. That's, okay. that's where you get to. So this yeah. is where we get this damn humble shit going. Let's <laughs> that's just right, get to right, like, right. This guy is a baller. I would not have him on the show yeah, so anyway, I just love his heart and what he does. And just, just even just recently, if you're not on Facebook, you need to follow Andy Summer. It's S-O-M-M-E-R. Just his, his journey, even just running and just being raw and authentic out there. I mean, this guy, I can sit here and talk about his ac ac accolades all day long. But let me just give you a quick perspective. He's been in the real estate game for at least 13 years. 07 is when he said he's got 60 units. And so how did you even, I mean, you're, I, I don't, I don't think people think that the word blue collar is a bad term. I mean, like, I is that it. like, where'd you come from? I'm, I'm a blue collar. Like I, sure, I, sure. I try I put on a little suit and act like I'm somebody and borrow a million dollars. I can, I can hang with those jokers kind of. Right. But uh, the people I want to mix it up are the people that are working every day. Yeah. How'd you like, how'd you get introduced to real estate? Oh yeah. You're from Indiana, right? right. Is that, is yeah. that where you live? Where do you, yeah. where, that's your city uh, right, on, right on the Ohio river. Uh, I work in Kentucky quite a bit. So I got that uh, Southern accent. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm a Hoosier. Okay. So like, 
did you, did his parents involved that taught you real estate? How'd you get? Oh, uh, no. So, so uh, both blue collar parents, uh, great parents, um, did have a lot growing up, but uh, we worked hard. Um, I wanted to get in real, you know, I, I, I got in HVAC right out of high school, wanted to be a high school teacher. Uh, it's too much schooling for me. So I went to trade school. Uh, wanted to get in real estate. I, I did work for landlords, HVAC work for landlords. And my wife, she's a, I'm in, I'm in the Enneagrams. So I'm an Enneagram three and I, I go, I mean, you a three. So we go full throttle, right? Uh, my wife's a six, so she's got to uh, bring me back. So I wanted to get in the real estate early, which uh, that like wasn't God's plan. Oh, like oh, when you were younger. Okay. Yeah, 18, how, how you know, yeah. So I was, I think we, I was 28 or nine when we got Okay, so is this a high school sweetheart? Or I mean, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well, okay, 20s. so you're you're real country. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, we just made you're sure real we're real country. country. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so She's not related, but I'm just no, saying. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did the, the, the me and 23 thing, so we're good. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, she rang me back, um, had, had someone approach my heat and air business, wouldn't know if I'd buy a duplex. We finally, uh, we bought three duplexes that first summer. Uh, like I said, I'm a three. So once I'm in, I'm in, we bought a lot. Uh, this was an 07. So this was at the downturn. We paid a little too much for the first, uh, 10 or 12 doors we bought, but, um, uh, so tax kind, of sales. Walk, kind of walk me through. So you were like, you yep. just had a regular day job. Your wife worked as well. Yep. yep. And someone randomly approached you. So you, it, yes. it was never in your mi mindset. Like you wasn't a rich dad, poor dad book. You, no, you, I read that about 10 years later. Yeah. And you just saw people like you're working for slumlords, you yep. know, Hey, yep. fix this. Yes. Yeah, fix this as cheap as possible. Cause I'm that's a right. cheap guy. Yep. And some dude needed to unload and that's how you kind of fell into the game. Yeah. Yeah. Paid, paid his asking price. Uh, yeah. I did everything absolutely wrong, but I did it. That's the main part. Well, you, you know, it's so it. interesting. Cause like when, when I first met you, you know, I, I was so confused. I was like, are you an instructor? You know, I, cause you, cause I knew you were a teacher Mm -hmm. And like, you know, real estate was always a second thought. And so, yeah. I, I mean, how, what made you get you ramped up? I know you're That's amped great. up anyway, but like, how can yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you're casually in it. You're like, Hey, yeah. it just makes sense. It makes money. We, Hey, we did it. Mm -hmm. then how do you jump up to so many units and why so that's, that that's a that's a great question. So we bought it just for retirement. You know, we're, we're buying them tenants are paying the mortgages. It's just retirement. I went to that first Mr. Landlord in 2011. Um, Wow. And I think Vena Jones uh, taught, uh, taught there. And I think she said something to the fact that, you know, you can make money on these and live on them. So we totally, you know, we went to landlord every year and, uh, and, and other classes. I'm a big believer in education. And uh, uh, we said, you know what, this, this could, this could be uh, our thing. So we had a five-year plan in 2012, beginning of 2012 for my wife to retire at 40 that five-year plan sped up to like nine months. I mean, we just ramped up that fast. So she retired, stayed home with kids. Um, and we just bought units, bought them right, uh, rehabbed them. Uh, we flipped a couple and, um, that's what we do full time now. No. So you're very, okay. This is okay. So I have a similar, I, uh, I read this one book called creating wealth by Robert G Allen. And I just ramped it up. I said, you can be a millionaire in 10 years. I'm like, I'm gonna see how fast I can do it. That's so right. you got the same mentality, mm -hmm. but you, you have such a huge passion for teaching yeah. and, and helping people, you know, I, it's all over you. Now, how'd yeah. you, why'd you stop being a teacher? Why'd you retire? <laughs> so like, I know, I know it's crazy. Like, so I, I, and you I took thought, a sales job. Cause I remember when you first got that job, you're like, I'm in sales. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm selling chillers. Like what's yeah. a chiller? <laughs> like, so, something to do, right? <laughs> so uh, I taught, I taught in a, uh, I've taught industry. I've taught in a prison high school. Um, I'm a three. So, so, uh, I've got to have a challenge. If I, if I don't have something to conquer, it's mm -hmm. over. So I, I, I took a kid to state and skills USA. We won the state, went to nationals, um, you know, kind of conquered the mountain, went to the community college, uh, designed a new building, got the program built up. New challenge come along with that sales gig, you know, see how much you can sell in a year. That was, that was, that was did great. You hit, did you hit that goal every year? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, I kind of topped out. I learned, you know, I, it was a great place to learn. Um, uh, wow. my dad passed away last March mm. and things just changed. Like, you know, you got to conquer something else. So, you know, I'm trying to conquer the health thing. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, well, I want to donate X amount of dollars to uh, charity, which I did come, last year. We want come to ramp on. That up. Yeah. Yeah. We want to ramp that up this year. Um, and, and just the next challenge. So, I'm going to maybe try to run a half marathon in, in 12 weeks, I think. 
something. So, you know, just something, I got to have something to accomplish. Wow. I, yeah. So what, what, what keeps you going? Like, I mean, you're, you're like the dream poster boy. I mean, like yeah. you, when you talk, I mean, my heart flutters because I, I think this way, but I don't know why. I don't know why I want to be driven. I, I, you know, I don't, I want to give more. I, I mean, I'm all about my health right now. My, all my goals this year for 2020 are like out of 10, nine of them are well, um, health. Like awesome. how many marathons can I do? Uh, how many miles can I do a day? Push ups, sit ups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got, I got, I got a, on my board right now. I'm doing 120 sit ups at every day. You know, can I do it? Can I be consistent? But what 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 what's take, what keeps you motivated? Like okay, that's great. So uh, you know when you get into sales or or um, uh, you're goal driven, it's it's based on a year. So I read a book about two years ago, the twelve week, um, the twelve week year, and you break everything up into twelve weeks, and it gives you a sense of urgency. I'm a, I'm a procrastinator. If it's not due, I'm not going to do it. Right. Um, but when it gets down to crunch time, that's when I produce the best. So by me doing our rental business, our health. Um, our financials, our giving, everything into 12 weeks. There's a sense of urgency from day one. And, um, you know, last year we crushed our, uh, our rental goals, our flip goals. This year we want to do the same thing. Um, so it's more of a challenge almost every day. I, I'm not waiting for, you know, Q1 to come through and, okay, we're good. No, Q1 is the end of the year. It's a 12-week year. So uh, that book and then Profit, uh, Profit First um, mm. was a great book as well. Okay, so you you're reading to mm -hmm. motivate you. You find something in a book, and then you yep. exercise it, or you try to apply it, and then yep. that keeps your synergy going. Okay, right. so how do you how do you balance with your wife? Because I, I mean, is she a high achiever like you? I mean, you're off the charts. She's like she's a she's a six, so she's a loyalist. Um, she's as loyal as a day is long to anything she's doing, um, but she's also uh, uh, cautious. So she keeps me reined in a little bit, but she knows when she's got to you know, let the horse run just a little bit. So uh, when I told her about this podcast, she's like, yeah, she goes, I'm going to the gym. You do your thing. <laughs> it's all good. You know, but uh, yeah, okay. she, um, she's very supportive. Um, she, she likes it. I mean, she's been a stay at home mom since 2012, you know, yeah, that's awesome. yeah, she's, you know, yeah, that's, that's her thing. So uh, yeah. My wife. Gym. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, okay. You, you, you thrown this out three times now. So I gotta, I gotta, we gotta reference it. Right. This Instagram deal. Yeah. So tell us about Enneagram. How'd you get a part of it and kind of walk? I mean, it's obviously changed your life on how you Absolutely. look at people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it came up last night in my Rhea club meeting uh, oh, about it. You know, yeah. this guy was like, he felt like he found Jesus because he knows <laughs> under, I'm like, dude, I, I don't, I don't really study Enneagram. I, I studied DISC. Yeah. You're a disc guy. Yeah. That's great. And it's similar, but Enneagram Absolutely. is a little bit deeper. So tell, tell us about Enneagram, like in a, in a, in a, in a, like you're teaching it, it to your son or, yeah. or someone's never heard it before. Tell us about it. What, what does it mean? And how does, how are you applying it? I think, I think I learned it through uh, Donald Miller's um, uh, podcast. Donald Miller's a guy in Nashville that does great stuff with story brand. That's another uh, thing I'm doing. But anyway, um, Enneagram, there's, there's nine different um, personality types. No one is better than the other. Um, and no one is, uh, is worse than the other. But, once you understand your Enneagram, um, what drives you, and then the people around you, um, especially in the workplace or in relationships, you're, you would jump up 10 years. You know, if, if you date and get married to your wife for 10 years, if you, if you knew the Enneagram from the get-go, mm -hmm. you're 10 years ahead, ahead of schedule. Uh, it helps me work with my contractors, uh, business partners. Uh, anybody, you know, when I first meet somebody, you're a disc guy, so you're, you're, you're trying to figure out what they are, right? That, not, not to deceive them, but to work with them better. Yes. Um, and, and it helps me understand the way I think. Cause sometimes I'm thinking, man, what's wrong with me? You know, I got, now I can't keep a job for more than five years cause I got conquered something else. Well, now we know why, you know? Sure. So, uh, um, but the Enneagram, um, uh, I think it's uh, Ian Croft. Uh, it, he's kind of the guru right now. He's got some podcasts, uh, or find him on Donald Miller. Um, it just helps you understand your personality, um, why why you think the way you think, and then the people around you. And then you can also learn some of your bad traits or traits you can improve on a little bit. Uh, so, but so it's basically, helped us tremendously. So basically, you Google up Enneagram, and it's yep. E-N, right? G-R-A-M or something? Yeah, E-E-E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. -E 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 okay, so like Google that. up Enneagram. You take yep. a test, Yep. and then it identifies kind of your personality type. Yep. And then it walks you through other personality types. So you're able to, uh, you know, connect, attract those type yeah. of people 
So yeah, I'm, my, my, I like it. I got four. I only have to memorize four. You guys have to. <laughs> I got nine. You, you, you guys got nine. I, I met a, a really good friend of mine. She, I, I taught her. D, I don't know if I taught her DISC, but when I, we were coaching, and I, I make everyone go through DISC, and in, in your, you know, because I want to know exactly who I'm talking to. Because right. if like if you're goal driven, or you're you're more social driven, I, I need to know like I need to teach you in that manner of fact the reasoning why so it's just easy for me and and so i can go get, like if you're a high d like me get to the point you know yes, if you're a c we got to open up a spreadsheet and we got to put in the numbers you know so i just it's just quick and d dirty for me mm -hmm. but i remember and i and i because I, I always ever the first session i always go into disc just so because i'm going to reference it every time and so this gal comes the, the next time and she just beat me up on instagram the whole day she's like you are a blank and da, da, da. i'm like wow i need to get a hold of this <laughs> And it's funny. It's like, I'm telling you, it's like salvation. Some people just, it sets them free. Obviously, I mean, it's helped you in all aspects. Like, So give us an example or your rentals or uh, give us some give us some ways. How are you applying it in those oh, type of areas? My, one of my favorite examples, um, I, I've got a handyman, uh, my best friend. He's my brother from another mother, the godfather to my son. You know, you, cool. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to battle with him. Me and, him, me and him clash every once in a while. Nothing major, but once I figured out he's a five. Oh, my God. Now what's I know a, what's what he a five? Needs. What's a five? So, what, exactly. What's a five? <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't just be five? yelling out numbers, homie. Yeah, you yeah. Tell so me. He's, he's an inventor. He, cool. he, an he inventor. needs to create. You know, when we go into a rehab, man, I got to let him go. I can't, I can't put my thumb on him. Let him go. Let him explore. He'll, he'll, he'll redesign a house three different times in an hour in his mind. And then I trust him because his finished product is, is unbelievable. And I've got to let him do it. And he's not driven by money. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he, he don't care if it takes an hour or 10,000 hours, but he's got to create. And, he, and he's not about, uh, you know, um, let's, let's paint every house the same color. He, that's, not, that's not him. He's got to invent. He's got to create. Um, oh. and he's phenomenal. But once I figured out he was that five, uh, it was a game changer. Uh, me and him, man, we click now, you know, and he understands I'm a compulsive, uh, addictive, you know, when I started running, uh, actually his wife's on my running team and, uh, he texts me, he goes, dude, he said, you've got a problem. You're addicted to this. <laughs> You're over compulsive. And he's right. That's I'm a three. That's what I do. You know? So, uh, it's, it's a great, you know, it, <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you say that because I remember there was a time I had an awesome handyman. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten where I am without this guy. And I bought this too bad. And, and I think it was too bad, one and a half bath. And I was like, you know, I couldn't have a vision. And this guy's like, oh, we can close this in. We can make this a three. But I'm like, wow. Yeah. And then that was the time where I, I mean, I don't know. In, in, in my mind, I always call him an engineer, but he's like, I'm not an engineer. I'm like, no, you're an engineer because, yeah, yeah. because you think this way. I don't, I just want to, how much is it going to cost me? I want to get paid. Like, I like just get down to the point. And yeah. he's like, we could put a wall. I'm like, well, how much is a wall? I'm like, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I can get more rent. And so, <laughs> and so yeah. next thing you know, I mean, I just let the dude loose, like you said. And I came back and it's a beautiful house. Yeah. And I was like, man, I, why did I always try to control everything? Because that's what D's do. They try to be mm -hmm. in control. Yep. Sometimes you just got to have faith and trust. Uh, yeah, I think that the Enneagram and DISC and all that stuff is so critical. And, and you said it earlier, and I, I, I'm telling you, my marriage is amazing because I know what my wife is and I know yeah. that I have to tune into a different gear or I have to just, you know, accept that she, she's not like this. Like she doesn't work on a budget. Like I'm all anal. Like we, we we're on it. Like I remember being married. I was like, okay, you got a hundred dollars and she'll come back. Well, I spent 110. Dude, it's only ten. no like you got to add the tax in there girl like right, it's, a, right. it's a it's a whole budget <laughs> and but high eyes don't think like i remember when she would pull, pull yeah it says it's a I, she's like it's a uh it's eighty dollars no it's like 85.99 no 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 that's not 80 that's not 80 dollars see because she rounds up the wrong way right but right. That, that but see what i realized through disc and just studying personalities is that's her she's just she, details are not mat don't matter to her Mm -hmm. She's just looking at the eight. She can't look at the five because right. she's only focused on what the eight can do for her. And that's what a high eye does. And so I think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world, you got to study this stuff. This stuff works. It makes you money. Look, I mean, look at you. I mean, I remember when you got that sales job, I was like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Took the, and, and I could see, I know your personality. I mean, it, and you just crushed it. You hit all these goals. 
Yeah. And, I, and I can't believe you still sustain. What, what, how are you dealing with being in a box of a corporate world? Have they let you go and be Andy? Or yeah, are you a still? Bit. Yeah, it are was, you? Uh, do you have to comply and turn in paperwork and and, yeah, and run it, a it was, corporate it was a fraternity, world? Fraternity, man. I'm telling you, it's a frat house there. You know, as long as you're hitting <laughs> your numbers, it's it's. We traveled. You know, we had a company car, uh, making six figures. The money's there. Just go crush it. So uh, a lot of freedom, and you know, I had a full time handyman. He took care of the rentals then, and and he went through some stuff, and and it just worked out. It was God's plan, but. Um, uh, when I understand what you are, disc or an enneagram, uh, the day I decided I was going to quit, um, I came home. I left the house at six, came home at eight, walked in the kitchen. Wife says, uh, "What's going on?" I said, "I'm going to quit my job today." She goes, "Okay, well, think about it. And let me know tonight." <laughs> you know, and it, she knows. You know, she's like, it's been four or five years. This guy's got to move on. So I come home that night, and she goes, "Do you think about it?" I said, "Oh, I'm definitely, definitely quitting now." She goes. All right. And left on good terms, two weeks notice, all that jazz. Uh, it was all good. Still talk to the guys that I worked there, but uh, uh, it was time to move on. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so. I think the cool thing is that I think another tip would be know yourself. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. I think that's a struggle for entrepreneurs. Like, how, you know, how do you, how do you figure out, I mean, you're so confident in who you are. You're not confident because of your success. You're not confident of yeah. these things. You're confident in trying to figure things out. Like, yes, I have to move on in five years. Has that always been a struggle? Has that always been like, I'm always like, I still deal with some depression, depression sometimes, yeah. or like right now I'm injured and it's really kind of frustrated me. I'm like, I can't run. I feel like I'm not a part of my little running team too. Mm -hmm. And I, I get depressed. And so I'm like, how do I get out of this depression? Do you work on yourself like that? And how, how you know, do you confide in people? Do you have a team around? Like how, what yeah, yeah. Speak? So uh, like you just you just sound so great. I'm mean, like, uh, I, I want to marry well, Andy. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, humble, but you know, when I, ta I taught an industry class this week and, and was talking about recovery and all this stuff. I have screwed up every which way possible on everything I've ever done, and that's I think that's the best way to learn. Um, I've burned up recovery machines. You know, I've 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 tore up uh, thousands of dollars of equipment. Uh, you know, had some houses not go right. That's okay. You just got to do it. Um, what do you say to yourself? What, like, how do you talk yourself through that? <laughs> I beat myself up, uh, not so much now, um, but I, I used to beat myself up a little bit mentally, you know. Um, but now you, that's how you learn. Uh, you know, with my dad, not to harp on this, with my dad passing, one of the best things he let us kids do was fail. Mm. Um, he wasn't one of those overprotective, uh, he may be an overprotective, but he lets you spread your wings uh, just like my mom did. So, I try to do the same thing, man. You hit on a, on a, on a uh, I'm working with a, a client right now, a guy, and he's afraid to fail. And, and I'm like, dude, to be successful, you've got to fail. You like, you, you gotta, you got, and I always think of, and this is just me. And I would love to hear your perspective is what's the worst thing that happened? <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I think that the success that I have received is because I know that I can do it again because I, I, I had nothing to start with. So what's the worst thing that like, what's the worst thing that could happen? I mean, you right. know, I, I mean right. like I just lose another thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. It would hurt me and it would be painful, but I could just figure out a way to make another thousand dollars. But I think it's, I think it's more risk if you don't take a leap, yes. of, if you don't fail. Yeah. And so yeah, do, you, do my, you walk yourself through that process too? How does that work for you? A, a little bit. Yeah. One, one of the biggest, uh, um, failures that I, I thought we had, we had a, we had a uh, duplex burn to the ground. I'm teaching an industry class in the middle of a hundred acre building. I get a phone call uh, from the local utility say, your building's on fire. It's like, oh my God. So, you know, get up in there. The class? And, in the middle of the in class? In the middle class. Yeah. Yeah. The guy let me leave and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so right, you got you a know? corporate job. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, he's yeah, go. So, you know, my wife gets there, I'm standing there, fire department's putting out, nobody got killed. That's, you know, that's the worst thing that could happen. Nobody got mm. killed. Smoke alarm saved everybody's life. Um, and I'm standing there and this, we had just rehabbed this duplex, man, top to bottom, you know, beautiful. Oh, man. oh yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, um, hey, the handyman at the time there shows up and he's almost getting ready to cry, you know. And, and, but, but <laughs> we thought it was a failure. We ended up donating the, the ground to Habitat for Humanity. Um, you know, we got an insurance check. Uh, everything worked out great. You know, there's a nice home, nice home on that piece of property now that has a nice family in it. Um, and cool. What a great yeah, perspective. Yeah, it was real cool. Yeah, it was real cool. But uh, yeah. I'm standing, I, just, I call one of my mentors, uh, Brad Grayson. 
And I said, man, this just happened. And I'm on the phone. I'm standing there looking at it. And he goes, it'll be all right. God's got a plan. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll trust it. So, you know, a friend of mine just had a, a burnout too. And same sure. scenario. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I just started. He, I could tell he's more of a detailed person. So I was like, well, what's the what? You know, he, and he confessed that he's like, I didn't have insurance on it. No. And I was like, I mean, so he, that, I think it was more of a, it wasn't that it burnt down. I mean, it's going to happen. Like yeah. life is going to happen. It's going to exist. Yeah. I've been sued so many times. I'm like, this is going to happen. People are going to slip and fall yes. and they're going to, they're going to think you're rich. So they're going to sue you. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, of course I was scared in the beginning many times, but when I was walking them through, I was like, look, what's the worst, like, what's the total loss? And so he was like, it was like a hundred thousand dollar house and da, 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 and you know, or some, he totally lost like, cause he could sell the lot in the, in the, gr the grumble. Mm -hmm. he, he, we, we dialed in, it was 20,000. Okay. So I was like $20,000. First of all, it's a $20,000 lesson to get insurance. But I was like, I didn't want to say that cause that's douchey. But I was like, well, how, and he's a big flipper. And I was like, well, how much do you make on a flip? He's like 30 G's. And I was like, on an average, he's like, well, 25, 30. I was like, just do one flip. How many flips you got going on? 12 this year. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's just failing forward. Like I, 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 I mean, I, I bought a building one time and I put the wrong insurance on it. I had residential insurance on a commercial building. Now, again, whose fault is that? It's mine. Cause my responsibility, my insurance agent, I'm going to choke him. I'm yeah. like, I gave you the address. And he wrote the insurance. But when I had a hail dam, I mean, uh, storm 2000 come through, they're like, Oh, they denied me cause I had the wrong insurance on it. That's my fault because I didn't read the documents. Right. Cause I, back then I didn't care. I was just, who opens up insurance <laughs> envelopes when you get them by the truckload? You, you just, I don't got time. Of course I have a different system now, but, uh, so tell us, uh, what, what inspires you now? Is it, you said every five years is a challenge. Is it, yeah. Um, it's just a season of your life. And what, what's, what's inspiring you now, your health and what's your goals on your health? Okay. Uh, goals like to maybe do a half marathon this year. Uh, we're doing the 2020, you know, uh, 20, yeah. uh, 2020 challenge. miles. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Run the edge challenge. How, how many uh, folks are on your team? What's that? How many people on your team? On your two right now. We got two. We need, we need <laughs> I'm some recruiting more. people too. <laughs> I mean, I filled yeah. up that one, but I'm like, I got a, I got a team going. I'm like, I try to recruit people because I'm like, yeah. now we've got fun. a second. We've got a second team. Nobody wanted to pay the money, so I, I had <laughs> my VA create a spreadsheet and then some kind of Google form so everybody could do it on the side. Nobody wants to spend fifty bucks, you know. So, I just out. had this conversation with this cheap <laughs> dude. I'm like, yeah. When you have you done the marathon one, you got the, the the second one that they have on there is a fun is even better because they have videos. You get a, a passport, you get stickers, you get a map. Every yeah. every time you get you pass twenty five miles, they send you something. It's way more fun than twenty twenty. Okay, I'll look at it. I'll look yeah, at it. <laughs> but it, you can have like eight people. So okay, so the marathon health is it like a certain weight number? Like you want to uh, weigh this or wear this or no? I just, I just want to be healthy. You know, low blood pressure, uh, no pills. I'm not. I haven't been on any pills forever. Uh, we lost. I lost a bunch of weight last year, so that's all good. Um, now, do, you, do you give yourself like rewards or like when what happens? Like and, and like let's get deep into this because okay. like right. when I hit my goal, I get depressed. Yeah. Like when I hit a hundred units, I was like, yeah, <sighs> I guess I'll do 150. When I hit 150, I was like, what's next? Yeah. Do, how do you, how do you keep, we do, you we do trips, we do trips and baseball games. We go, okay. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do trips. Yeah. So when you, so, when you run this marathon, like, is it going to run a marathon somewhere else or what, what do you tell me? What do you mean by trips? Uh, you know, last year we went to Denver, Colorado this year. We want to go to spring training game. Uh, we, we went to Panama city on a whim last fall after a flip. We decided, Hey, let's go to Panama city on fall break. Um, yeah, we just want to, we uh, maybe go to Caribbean. Just, so you, just so you, so you don't even, so you don't even have this written down. This is all random. If, if I could kind of right. understand you. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, I've, I've got a few of the trips. I got San Diego written down this year. Okay. Uh, all right. Spring training written down this year, full throttle, wherever it's at, it'll be written down, you know, so that's okay. stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. So <laughs> how about your, your, so you got these health goals. Mm -hmm. are, are you content with your real estate? What, what does it look like? Are you trying to. I obviously build a legacy. You got beautiful children. What, right. What's your goal there on your real estate? Uh, so the goal in real estate, I'm looking, I, I use life tech, uh, which kind of keeps track of your goals. We want to add about 12 rentals this year. Okay. Um, good solid uh, single family. Probably. Um, we, we just like single family. We want to flip about four to six houses this year. Okay. Uh, and that's, and that's, a, that's, that's plenty. That's all I need. You know, I mean, <laughs> we don't I, need. I, yeah. You're, you're, you're content. Yeah. So, um, 
when you, when you are struggling, what, what's the first thing like you do? Do you call someone, email someone like you're, you're just, you know, you're in a dark place. How, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give people, I mean, you have so much good wisdom, right? What, what else? Like, you know, like someone c- called me and they were in a very dark place and yeah. like they sent me a text message, like they're super depressed or something. And yeah. I said, you know, yeah. what I do is I was like, I listen to Jim Rohn. Mm-hmm. It's like, and I try to do something nice for someone else better to, to better them than me. Like, like look beyond myself. And so that, you know, that tries to, to mitigate that. Like you are just, I, I have never seen you sad. <laughs> like, and of course I don't hang out with you every day, right, 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 right. but like, I mean, uh, what, what, what is it? Do you, do you, do you turn into your wife? Is she, you console with her? Like, how do you, do you oh, have yeah, men? Yeah, yeah. Do you have men? Or, I mean, do you go to church? I mean, yeah, you, yeah, we got a good church family. We go to, uh, like, what do you, wife. like, what do you do? Who do you call? Like, how does it work? Do you have a mentor? Yeah, I've got I've got a few mentors. I got a great best friend. He's the one that got me running. And right. I, honestly, now uh, you know we had the grieving process this year. Uh, I run. That's that's how I, that's how I got into uh, that. My best friend got me into running. And when I get down, I was down Christmas for a little bit. I yes. ran. You know, ran four miles. You know, and can convert that grieving or pain to something else uh, yeah. and be productive. So, um, so you're uh, just a very logical person. It just yes, makes sense. Very, Yep. Yeah, yep. I, I, I know that sense. the pain of the loss is um, it, it, it goes in waves. It's going to be yes. interesting, and yeah, you know, and, and the success in, in your health now, and you're like, you wish you could, have, you know, you see your, have your dad see you. I mean, it, it is a process. I mean, I still deal with it, and sure, sure. Um, it, you know, but there's always a reason he's in a better place, and Absolutely. it's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So okay, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm trying to think. So let's. Let's go into, you know, the mindset of a real estate investor. So okay. right now you're talking to a young guy, mm-hmm. a gal, what, what should be the first thing they should be doing? It, you know, you can go back now. You've been doing this for 13 years. Yeah. You, you, you're financially free. Right. What would you have done a little bit different or would, I mean, I know you're content. I know who you are. I know right. you, you wouldn't regret anything that you've done. And I agree with you. Um, even from burning down houses, uh, right. I, I would have never, <laughs> but what, what, you know, this is your son, you know, Hey, these are the, th- these are the key things that you need to do right now. And, uh, what would you say to him? All right. So my son turned 16 Monday. I gave him rich dad, poor dad <clears throat> for the book. Um, I wish I'd read it sooner on his birthday. Uh, on his birthday, yeah, cool. Yep, love yeah. it. Um, and and he, he, him and my daughters got it. They, they'll 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 read it. But I would tell a newbie, uh, read that book. Go to classes. Find a find a group. Just be around. You know, you always want to be the dumbest person in the room. Um, be I just around. That. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, get educated. Read all the books. Um, I've got a list of books. Anybody ask me, you know, we mentor a few people what should I do? Read these books, you know, and then come to this group. We do a landlord association once a month. Um, we invite people to that. We get around like-minded people, landlord in real estate's kind of lonely. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then, and then, uh, I like, we like to travel a little bit. So we, we try to go to some conferences and conventions and, cool. and then, and then the best advice is buy one. That's the best <laughs> way to learn it. You know, Just do buy it. one. Yeah. Or buy okay. six. All right, we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna wrap this up. First of all, <clears throat> how do people get a hold of you? I, I know that I know for some of my friends have called you <laughs> on heat and air questions. I even text you when I first moved into my house. Right. Hey, my my AC is twenty years old. It makes this weird sound. <laughs> yeah. remember, the, remember that call? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love like, it. I'll, I'll help anybody. So uh, I, I don't know find, if you have to put can... your number out there, but is there an email? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, can, yeah. They can email me at uh, HVAC at Vista. Point Properties. It's all one word, V-I-S-T-A-P-O-I-N-T-P-R-O-P-E-R-T-I-E-S. Um, they can find me on Twitter. They, all they got to do is uh, search my name. Um, and that's a, and I'm on Facebook, Andy Summer. So they can uh, get a hold of me any way, any way okay. that way. Man, <laughs> it's awesome, man. Uh, you just lighten my day up. Good, so, man. Good. And uh, keep running and uh, let, let us know when you run this marathon. We do have a savvy run. Savvy dot run coming and it's to benefit Augie. Remember Augie? You know Augie, yeah. right? Yeah. So we Wheel have a, we're doing a virtual marathon in May to all the money goes to the wheelchairs. So that might be uh-huh. in one of your marathons. So you might have to do it's a half. So or you could do yeah. a five K. So that yeah. may be one of your uh goals you need to add yeah. on. Augie's great. Yeah. All right. 
man, it's a pleasure. And if you ever need anything, I, you've helped me so much. I, I would love to help you as well. Take yeah. care, Andy. Appreciate we'll see you. you. Soon. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Broke? Just tired of making chump change? Learn how to improve your income and build wealth with real estate investing. Investor Weekend is here to help you do just that. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend that is bound to enlarge your real estate investments. What can you expect to get from the Investor Weekend? Hear great national and local real estate investors. Learn how to buy rental property, build wealth, and connect with other like-minded people for funding, partnerships, and even hot deals. Whether you are a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Right now, only $98. Go to www.investorweekend.com now to register or to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 